In this video, we'll see how deep learning differs from traditional machine learning. In particular, we'll get to know the concept of representation learning, which automatically learns representations from the data rather than relying on manually created features. And we'll see how deep learning is a particular type of representation learning that learns features using multiple levels of abstraction. So let's dive right in. Representation learning and deep learning. To see how deep learning is different from standard machine learning, let's start with the definition of representation learning. And I like this definition here by Jan Lequin, Joshua Benjo, and Jeff Hinton in their 2015 Nature paper on deep learning. And this definition reads, representation learning is a set of methods that allows a machine to be fed with raw data and to automatically discover the representations needed for detection or classification. At the bottom here, we have an example of two different types of representations for the same um, data. And so on the left here, we have Cartesian coordinates, and we see that the blue class and the green class are, well, separated by sort of this decision surface that's circular. And that is actually a very complicated decision surface to learn for traditional machine learning methods. Rather, when we look at polar coordinates, then we see that trivially the data is linearly separable, and we could learn this with any type of linear classifier, even just with a decision stump, with a single split, or with a, a linear SVM, or with a logistic regression. All of these would perfectly classify the data on the right and would have big trouble um, when you look at the representation of the data on the left. So representation learning is all about automatically finding the right representation for the data at hand so that the learning task is then easy. So now let's have a look at how deep learning is defined. In the same paper as above, Jan Lecker and his co-authors describe deep learning as being all about representation learning methods with multiple levels of representation obtained by composing simple but nonlinear modules that each transform the representation at one level into a higher, slightly more abstract one. And down here we have an example. So this decision surface here is pretty complex. But we could think of folding the space along this axis to get to this point here where the decision surface isn't quite as complex anymore. And we could fold again along this axis to get to the point where the decision surface is really just this relatively simple line over here. So this is an example of how we can use relatively simple nonlinear transformations to go from one representation to a different slightly higher level and slightly more abstract representation in which it is easier to learn a decision boundary. Now, how does this uh, relate to standard machine learning? In standard machine learning, we have high level attributes or features of the data. And well, those could be something like the binary attributes that we use for um, decision trees. And these features, well, they need to come from somewhere. And in particular, they typically come from a domain expert who actually needs to spend substantial amounts of time in feature engineering. So to illustrate this a little bit better, here we have three images of um, pears and apples. And we could say that we have, well, two features, one that's uh, the color of the apple and one that's the size. And so in standard machine learning, we would then call this here the feature vector for the first data point. And we could call this here the label for the first data point. And we would do that for all the different features and would call this here our X matrix and this our Y vector, and then feed this to a standard machine learning pipeline. And we can, of course, do that when we have these features. And in standard machine learning, we just assume that we have these features. Now, in contrast, in representation learning, we don't want to have to assume that a domain expert creates these features for us, but we rather want to be able to learn them directly from the raw data, jointly together with learning a classifier using them. All of that in an end-to-end -end fashion. So in a neural network, for example, when the first data point goes in, so say this, this apple here, then the inputs are the raw pixels 
of the apple. And the outputs in the end are the probability that um, this image is classified as an apple or as a pear. And the key point is that we try to learn weights of this neural network on all of these different connections here, each of these, such that the final classifier outputs the right classes. And we try to find an internal representation that helps us learn this classifier in the last layer much easier than it would be based on the raw pixels at the inputs. So learning the internal representations at these different layers of the neural network, that's representation learning. And when we use several layers of abstraction, then it's um, the special case of deep learning. Now, how does deep learning compare to shallow learning? In shallow learning, you would have a relatively shallow neural network. So for example, in this case here, you would just have this single hidden layer to learn a representation that makes it easier to learn the classification in the final layer. In contrast, in deep learning, you can actually learn on multiple levels of representation, and you can afford to only go a little bit higher in abstraction at each of these levels. For example, you could learn to take the pixels and combine them to edges. You can take the edges and combine them to contours. You can take the contours and combine them to object parts. And then when you have these object parts, then for example, here you have almost this prototypical dog classifier, and here you have a more or less caricature of a human, then it's much easier using these high level features to actually learn a classifier on top. So the visualizations here actually come from a real neural network that learned a representation. And well, this edge detector here, for example, um, detects an edge between, well, this a blue area and well, this red area. There's an edge detector here that detects these um, type of white edges. And each of these images actually represents the input that would most excite this neuron. And likewise, this contour here um, is what would most excite this particular neuron. And well, say this, this neuron here, this visualization is what uh, is the input that would actually most excite this particular neuron here. So these are actual um, representations learned in a neural network without us telling the neural network what representations to learn, but these are useful representations in order to actually do this final classification here. So that's what deep learning is about. It's about learning a hierarchy of representations that build on each other from simple to complex. Simple, like edge detectors, to complex, like object parts, and that are learned in an end-to-end -end fashion from raw data. So the important thing here is that Nobody told this network that it ought to learn edges and contours and object parts. This is not the training signal. The training signal is only the following. Here's an image. This is a human. Here's an image. That's a cat. Here's an image. That's a dog, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And potentially, we have millions of these images. And then the weights of this neural network are learned in such a fashion that when you take the input images, do the computations on them to compute the excitations of all the different neurons, that in the end, the probability of the correct output for each of the images is maximized. We'll see this in more detail later, but it's really all about you having one joint objective function, namely to maximize the probability of your true labels. And the key is that you learn the connections of the neural network jointly in order to achieve this task. This computer vision example is, of course, very nice because we can look at what the features actually are. And we can also relate this to what has been done before in the computer vision literature for the last decades. Indeed, people have actually manually come up with pipelines like this, where they first took pixels and combined them to edges, and then took the edges, combined them to contours, took the contours, combined them to ob object parts, and then the object parts to classes. And importantly, now with deep learning, all this manual feature engineering just goes away. And there's just one loss function. And all these different weights of the neural network are all optimized together in order to minimize that loss function. 
So you basically learn this edge detector in order to be able to then learn good contours that then you can combine in a way that, that you can learn good object parts, all of these only in order to then have a representation that actually allows you to maximize the classifier, um, the, the correctness of the classifier in the end. And all these weights are interconnected and are all optimized together in order to get this good performance. That's a key point in deep learning, this end-to-end -end optimization from raw data. So let's now summarize how representation learning and deep learning in particular relate to more traditional learning approaches. So first of all, if you have a good old fashioned rule-based system, there's actually no learning at all. So we have the input that directly goes into a hand design program and design program spits out some output and there you go. Um, it's very simple, but there's no learning. Then in classic machine learning, as we've seen, we have the input going into hand design features. So those are designed by domain experts. Then we learn a mapping from the features. And this is typically where most of machine learning research goes, how to learn this mapping. And then we have the output. Now, over here, we have the representation learning approaches. And well, these gray boxes are actually learning steps. And the difference between well, the shallow learning pipeline and the classic machine learning pipeline is that here the features are actually learned, whereas here the features were hand designed. But then you have a mapping from the features to the outputs, just like in um, classic machine learning. And then in deep learning, on top of what you have for the shallow learning, you have these additional layers of more abstract features. So you're able to learn successively more abstract representations of your data. And you can afford to only have um, each of these steps be a little bit more abstract than the previous steps. So um, you, you're actually very expressive in this. So these multiple layers of abstraction, that's what deep learning is about. All right, this brings us to the end of this video, and I'd like to leave you with these questions to think about for yourself. So thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.